Hello, beautiful awakening artists. My name is BJ, and I'm beginning this video vlog, blog, because I feel it is my job now as an artist, as a singer, as a dancer, as an actress, and as a teacher to fully appreciate, enjoy the gifts that I've been given and encourage you to do the same. Primarily because it's our path and also because we have a new a, a new wave of artists coming in and some of them may be in some of your classes if you're also a teacher as well as a performer. Some people call them indigo children, crystal children, rainbow children. I actually identify as first wave indigo and if you don't know anything about that just google it it's all over the internet 99% of you will resonate with that information. But these are different indigos and uh, also just, you know, they, they don't have the baggage that we have. So they're going to be coming into this old, outdated system that you and I work in professionally. A system where it has always been encouraged to belittle the artist, to build them up, to get in your face, to yell, to hit the cane, to... <sighs> These children are not going to be functioning that way, and they have very important things to say within their art form. So let's be as blissed out as possible as artists so that we can put down the welcome mat for these new artists as they come in. So we're going to begin today talking about self-care. Listening to your empathy. When I walk into a studio or anywhere, I can always pick up on the energy of that room. I don't necessarily understand what that energy is, but I know if it's negative or positive. And this is most of the time. I've started listening to what it does to my body. This is where I manifest a lot of negativity. Whew. And now I'm also I'm going to be attributing a lot of the vlogs to my dance training. Like I said, I am also a singer and an actress. I just happen to be working more on my dance technique right now. So hang tight if you are singers and actors. I think everything that I'm going to be talking about will apply to any artist, but just hang in there. I will get to uh, attributing to things for the other art forms. Anyway, when I'm in a dance class, I find that when I'm really working on something really difficult, that's when the tension comes in. And that's my stuff. But what if you're picking up on someone else's stuff? And how do you know that? I don't have an answer for that yet. Hopefully, I'd like to have the answer soon and I'll share that with you. But I'm listening to it. And I think that that's the first step, just listening to this and is it coming from you or is it coming from something in the room because as artists we are empathetic beings you cannot deny this which is really funny about the system that we work in because we're only allowed to be empathetic on the stage right but we we take everything home we really do there's also information coming to us to help us. We have guides. I really believe this. And the reason that I believe this is when my father passed away, he came to me before I got the call. And that was the first time that I realized there really is something else out there. And then I was introduced to my spirit guide one night. Uh, it's been an amazing journey. So we have support around us. And even if you can't see them or can't hear them, and some people call them angels, whatever, just call out for help from your highest guide to help for situations. And they'll become louder and louder, believe me. Tarot is a very good way to do that, by the way. So, uh, but how do you know if you're getting a message from a guide? For me, I do have an answer for myself for this. And basically, this actually happened the other day, I was in class and I had finished the whole bar and had done some adagio in the center, which is, if you don't know, it's, it's the slow movements in the center without the ballet bar before you start doing the fast footwork and the jumps. I finished that off 
And very quickly, it wasn't even a thought or words in my head. It was just a knowing, stop, you've done enough. Now, I know I'm not lazy. I've gotten over that. <laughs> I've learned to listen to that small knowing before I injure myself. And sometimes it's not about my guide trying to keep me from injuring myself, but sometimes my guide wants me to get out there and stretch in the hallway because there's someone that needs some comforting and I don't know that until I get out there. Or maybe I need to hear something from somebody who happens to be chatting, something that's gonna benefit me. You never know when or why you get these quick knowings. Now, if it's a fear-based thing, because sometimes I'll get the thought and the words I better stop because I got a big test tomorrow, I'm in college, or uh, oh, I'm not gonna do good in, in this combination. And the reason I know that that's not a guiding message for me is that that will keep going and going and going like a recording that just won't stop in my head. And again, my body will start to nah, tense up. Okay, so listening to your empathy. Are you cleansing your chakras? That's the next step. I've gotten into a habit recently I'm very proud of. When I, and I'll do it either in the morning or at night because where's the time otherwise? And I will take a shower and while I'm in the shower because I feel that water, I very much connect to water. It brings me to a different place. When I'm in the shower, I will ask the love in the universe to clean my chakras and so I'll start to do that that chakra meditation where you're really visualizing each chakra and the colors going all the way down just white light and cleansing them and then they start to spin and activate and then what I do is I ask for protection around that because we don't want to leave that open now I live in New York City we are combining auras here daily with strangers and people who are carrying around a lot of auric debris. It is, I have noticed a huge difference when I do this chakra cleansing and putting that white bubble, that white light bubble around my aura before I walk out the door. Can you imagine you have just gotten into a subway car, it's jam-packed, we're all like here, and you're right next to physically someone. An aura is an actual energy field that comes off of your body. So not only am I touching the person, I'm right inside their auric field, and they're right inside mine. So this cleansing is so important, and also important because we never know who's going to be in that dance class. We never know when we're going to that audition. Listen, there's so much anxiety when you go to an audition. I feel it so much. I can walk in as positive as can be and not even worried about the outcome and be picking up on so much angst and, and tension. So cleansing and activating those, those chakras and putting a bubble around your aura, very important. Enjoying your mistakes. Now this is less spiritual and just more, I think, practical. I went through a horrible series of spinal injuries. It was actually something that I experienced as a teenager that never got looked at. So I was dancing for many years, not knowing that I had had damage in my spine from this incident. And I woke up one day from doing an opera, of all things, and couldn't move my arm. I was diagnosed with several herniated discs, three in my neck, one in my lower back, and who knows, in the thoracic, it was never checked. I was out for six years trying to recuperate. But it was such a blessing. I really am being completely honest about that. A true blessing to lose the ability to do what I love to do, because now that I have it back, and I had doctors telling me, never dance again. Just stop. To now be in the studio and working, I, I don't mind the mistakes. I find joy in the mistakes. And I, I, 
I wish this for everyone. I don't wish the injury part, believe me, but I do wish the joy part. Oh, I made a mistake. Look at that. Isn't that funny? Now I'm a nut anyway, just by nature. <laughs> I have carefully selected teachers who are okay with this because I want to be my true happiest self when I'm in the studio. I want to be challenged. I want to work hard. And if I make a mistake, I don't want to be looked at like I'm an idiot or that I'm not paying attention because that's just not the case. And if you are a working adult artist, it's impossible for you to be lazy or not paying attention. Otherwise, why would you be walking into class? So enjoy, enjoy the mistakes. It's, it is part of the journey. It, it is the journey itself that is so important. It really is. Lastly, find your teacher, find your tribe. It, it makes a huge difference. And I was saying earlier that we do work in a system that doesn't really support the kind of people that we are, which is ironic, yes? But there are so many people within that system that are just like us, that do support us. They went through the times when they felt not appreciated and not valued for who they were as people. Find those people, they're teaching, they're giving their gift freely sometimes. No one needs to be working in, let's say a ballet company where they don't have a lot of choices. Let's say they're in, in a company where maybe it's not the greatest company in the world, but it's paying the rent. No one in a company like that needs to be going into a class where they're going to get yelled at. We already have a wonderful work ethic. 